The centering poem is written by Reverend Sarah Speed. I put my headphones in. I walk quickly. I look toward the ground. I create one million barriers of independence, but still God seeks after me. God leans a rainbow over the sky. God sends sun after the rain. God blankets the earth with wildflowers. God allows music to carry and laughter to rise, all so that I might notice. And when I do notice, the unfurling that begins in my soul is slow and holy and burning. I am not alone. God has been chasing after me all this time. Please stand with me for our call to worship. You'll see the responses in bold in your bulletin. Come in, feel your feet on the floor, settle your worries, take a deep breath, dust the cobwebs from your ears, relax the tension in your jaw. For Christ is here. God never stops seeking us. We have been found. Let us find God in return. Let us worship the God of deep waters. Amen. Hear this call to confession. In our scripture passage for today, we will hear about Jesus calling Peter to be a disciple. In this story, Peter is in the presence of the divine for quite some time before he even realizes it. Jesus crawls into Peter's boat and tells him to head to deep water. Together they let the nets down and it is only when the boat threatens to sink due to the extreme abundance of fish that Peter turns to Jesus and truly sees who's in his boat. Sometimes we miss what's right in front of us. Fortunately, Christ keeps climbing in our boats anyway. So join with me in the prayer of confession, not out of fear, but out of awe and desire to see the one who is right in front of us. Let us pray. Loving God, you call us by name. You join us in the deep waters of life. You invite us to drop our nets and follow you and yet, more often than we'd like to admit, we are like Peter. Over and over again, we stand slack-jawed and surprised to find you in our midst. Forgive us for drowning out your voice with our own. Forgive us for assuming that we can tackle deep waters by ourselves. Forgive us for forgetting that you will never stop climbing into our boat. Turn our hearts, our minds, and our spirits toward you. For you are the Lord our God, and it is in your name that we pray. Amen. Friends, Peter didn't exactly make a good first impression when Jesus got into his boat. He questioned dropping the nets as they hadn't caught any fish all night. He was oblivious to who Christ was. And once he realized divinity was standing in his boat, he deemed himself unworthy. And even still, Jesus called Peter a disciple and friend. Family, hear this good news. You can make a thousand bad impressions. You can make every mistake in the book, roll your eyes and assume you know better, and still, Christ forgives you, claims you, and continues to seek your heart. That is the good news of the gospel. Rest, celebrate, and trust in that. Amen. Will you join with me in our opening song number 383? This is a day of new beginnings. We'll sing verses 1 through 4 of 383.
You may be seated. Please bow with me for the prayer for illumination. Creator God, you hear everything. You hear the rush of the wind through the trees. You hear a baby's first cry. You hear crickets chirping, our silent prayers, and laughter around tables. You hear it all. We don't need that same capacity, but we do need to hear your word, O oh God, for we cannot live on bread alone. So today we pray, give us the ability to truly listen. Give us the ability to listen with our hearts, and may the truths revealed in your scripture today change us. With hearts full of gratitude, we pray. Amen. Our first reading is from Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10, in the New Revised Standard Version. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me, for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. This Lent, we are focusing on the life and faith of one of Jesus' most famous disciples. In Peter, we see a person who is both steadfast and unsteady, a dear friend and a betrayer, a follower and a wanderer. In Peter, we often see ourselves. By following Peter's journey, we watch the story of Jesus unfold through the eyes of a very normal human trying to figure it all out, just like us. Hear this story of Simon Peter and the other fishermen when they encountered Jesus. This is Luke 5, 1 to 11. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite the children to come up to join me and Miss Emma for a few minutes together. Have you ever felt discouraged or 
like you were trying to do something and it just wasn't good enough. Yeah. So today I'm going to have you help me act out a story about someone who is discouraged. His name was Simon Peter. And this is our Lake of Galilee. Yeah, sometimes he's called Simon, and sometimes he's called Peter. So I'm going to say Simon Peter, because it's one person. So this is our Lake of Galilee, and Simon Peter was a fisherman. And he was out with his buddies, James and John, and Zebedee, their father, and they were trying to catch fish out of this lake. So pretend that your hands are nets and catch some fish. Come on, catch them, catch them. Keep trying, keep trying. Okay, see if you can get any. Come on, you're not getting any fish. What's going on? Come on, try. Use your nets, get some fish. Oh, you should be getting, those are such good nets. Those are such, you're doing a good job, but I don't see you catching any fish. Oh, they were so discouraged. They just like, they're fishermen, but they could not catch any fish. They kept putting their nets out all night long. They couldn't catch anything. Not even a salmon. Not even a little hooligan. <laughs> and then they're coming back. They're coming back to the shore in their boats. And so they're taking their, their boats back to the shore. And who do they see but a huge crowd of people following Jesus. And Jesus is getting crowded by the people, so he waves them over, and he gets into the boat. And he teaches the people from the boat, so he doesn't get smushed by the crowd. So Jesus is teaching, and Simon Peter is probably feeling like, whoa, that's a weird ending to a, a disappointing night. I get to see Jesus up close. I've been too busy fishing. I can't follow around, follow, go to look for Jesus, because... I'm busy fishing, and here Jesus came to me, and he's in my boat. So after Jesus finishes his talk, he turns to Simon Peter, he says, put your, put your net over, put your net out over the boat one more time. And all of a sudden, Peter feels disappointed again and feels like maybe he's not good enough. He's like, we've been doing that all night, but if you ask, I will do it. So... Emma, can you help me? You're going to be, hold this in your hand. You're going to be my, you're Simon Peter. So he puts the nets over the boat. And all of a sudden, here, all of a sudden, the fish start piling in. Oh, your boat is sinking. Support it a little better. Your boat, your boat is sinking. Oh, no, come on, James and John, bring your boat over. <laughs> the, fish are, the fish are filling up the boats. And they start to sink. They came out of nowhere. Wow. So, oh. so everyone is so amazed. Even P Simon Peter is amazed. But he's also feeling like, oh. I, you know what he says to Jesus? Simon Peter says, go away from me. I'm too sinful to be your friend. I'm not good enough. And he's feeling so sad. And, but Jesus looks at Simon Peter, and Jesus says to him, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid that you're not good enough. You're going to be a fisher of people. Oh, do you know what that means? Simon Peter knows what that means. Simon Peter knows that Jesus thinks he's good enough. Jesus thinks he's enough. Jesus wants to, him to be his friend and to follow him and to help him tell the people about God's love. So they, they come to shore. They come to, I know, okay, now our, our analogy gets, goes to, they, pretend this is the shore now. They bring, their shore, they bring their fish to shore. But guess where Simon Peter goes? Simon Peter was feeling not good enough. But Jesus told him, you are enough. And can you read what's on the bottom of that? 
Jesus wants you to know that you are enough too. So can you all say that with me? I am enough. I am enough. What else does God also want us to know? Love for me overflows. Yeah, just like the boats were overflowing with fish, God's love for us overflows the boat. And Jesus called, he, he asked Simon Peter to come and share about God's love, the love that overflows the boat with other people. And God wants us to know that too, that his love for us overflows. So can you say that with me? God's love for me overflows. So you know what else love does? Love does overflow and love grows. You can each take one. These are called orca beans. And if you take it home and plant it, it will grow. And if it doesn't grow, you know what? For us is not just one little bean. God's love for us overflows. So if your one bean doesn't grow, you can come back. <laughs> or you ask your mom or your dad or your grandma or grandpa. They will give you another bean. One bean and see how it grows. Okay? And, when, and that will remind you how God's love for you grows and overflows. Okay, let's all pray together. Let's pray. Can you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for telling us that we are enough. Thank you that your love for us overflows. All God's children said, Amen. Where's the other boat? Will you repeat after me? I am enough. I am enough. God's love for me overflows. God's love for me overflows. I don't think I need to preach now. That's the whole lesson right there. Thank you so much, Emma. So today is the first Sunday in the season of Lent. This Lent, we are focusing on the life and faith of one of Jesus' most famous disciples. In Peter, we do see that person who wanders as he follows. And that feels so much like our own journey of faith. By following Peter's journey, we get to watch the story of Jesus unfold through the eyes of a very normal person. And as we are wandering through faith with Peter, a song that comes to mind is the beloved hymn, Come Thou Fount. It talks about wandering in that song. It's almost like Peter wrote that song himself. And so for each step in Peter's journey, we will focus on a different phrase from that hymn. And as we follow his story, we'll sing our way through Lent, binding our wandering hearts to God. As we start on Peter's story, we don't actually start with Simon Peter's first encounter with Jesus, but his second one, just before the scene that we heard Jason read, Jesus had been traveling around Galilee, healing all manner of dis-ease, casting out unclean spirits, restoring people to wholeness. And one of those people was Simon Peter's mother-in-law. She was suffering from a high fever and they asked Jesus to see to her. He healed her immediately and she got up to serve. Simon Peter witnessed that miraculous healing. And yet, the next time he encountered Jesus, he was hesitant to obey. The crowds who had been following Jesus were pressing in close. So he asked Peter to take him out in his boat and he taught the people on the shore. But then he gave the fishermen an instruction, pull out into the deeper water and let down your nets. Peter, who had already seen 
Jesus' power at work argued, saying, we've been fishing all night with no luck, but if you say so, I'll try one more time. When the overwhelming abundance of fish threatened to break their nets, Peter didn't respond with gratitude, but with fear, saying, go away from me. I am a sinful man. It would be easy for us to judge Peter's actions with our privilege of 2,000 years worth of hindsight. But the thing about Peter is he is very human. He is very relatable. Sure, he saw Jesus perform a miracle, but what if it was a fluke? What if it was a coincidence? What if his mother-in-law's fever was going to break that day anyway and Jesus just happened to be there? His suspicion and his skepticism are very natural. And if you're like Peter and me, it's very familiar. And while a little hesitant, he was still trying, willing to trust Jesus and do what he said and throw in that net one more time. I think about how often we do the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, thinking we know best, doing what we've always done because it's always worked before. But Jesus is leading us to take a little risk, to go a little further out, to try something new just this once. I think about the discernment process our church leadership team is in right now uh, to discern whether we're ready to try a new structure of governance. Administrative and ministry committees full of members meeting regularly to make decisions and report to church council worked for us for a long time. It worked until it didn't. And yet we keep throwing our net in the same place. If only the nominations committee could get a few more people to serve on committees. If only we had more meetings, fewer meetings, Zoom meetings, in-person meetings, hybrid meetings, less meetings, net after net coming up empty. But now God is calling us to try something different, to take a risk, to go a little deeper and discern if a new style of leadership will bring us a good catch. You'll hear more about this discernment process over the course of the whole year ahead from me and from members of the discernment team. But for now, I encourage you to pray for this time of transition, this time where we're seeking to follow Jesus to a new place and the abundance he provides. Peter was really reluctant to try something new, but when he saw the results, he was not overwhelmed with gratitude. Instead, something like awe and fear came over him, as if his eyes were finally opened to this Holy One in his presence, and he realized how unworthy he was. I wonder if he felt undeserving, undeserving of the bounty, undeserving of Jesus' presence. But Jesus didn't shy away from him. He chose Simon Peter on purpose. Jesus didn't seek out trained rabbis and priests to be his disciple. Instead, he found some Galilean fishermen to follow him and join his ministry. He didn't look for the people with the privilege or the wealth or the power. Instead, he turned to the people who were trying to live under the oppressive Roman Empire. Fishermen were taxed on their catches, and what looked like a bounty of food was probably also going to be a huge financial burden when the authorities found out. Fishermen lived on the edge with their subsistence lifestyle, something we know well in Alaska. They knew what it was like to work hard and sometimes celebrate the cash the catch and sometimes to go hungry, to work under oppressive laws, to flex with all the ups and downs. And that also sounds an awful lot like the journey of faith. We have times when we feel the overwhelming abundance of God's grace and love, and we have those times when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, one foot in front of the other, until we are able to see the Christ light shining again. In this series, we affirm that faith is a constant journey of steadfast pursuit, one that ebbs and flows, and wandering is exploration. It's a way that we find our way to God as God 
finds the way to us. Peter will be our guide in this series as we see the ways that his own faith journey has its ups and downs, and yet he keeps going. He drops his nets, he walks on water, he runs to the empty tomb, he swims to the shore to meet the risen Christ. He keeps searching and yearning and loving even after missteps and mistakes. Ultimately, in Peter's story, we are reminded that God loves perfectly imperfect people. In fact, time and again, that's exactly who God calls and claims. This Lent, we will look for ourselves in the stepping stones of Peter's story. Like so many of us, Peter had a wandering heart. His journey was not polished or linear or perfect, but he was always tethered to the love of God. And when we look closely at Peter's story, we can see that Jesus is with him every step of the way, offering him abundance, catching him when he starts to sink, challenging him when he stands in the way, washing his feet, predicting his betrayal, and always, always offering him love. This Lent, we're joining Peter in figuring out faith. We'll wander alongside of him, open to what we might learn about Jesus and ourselves by stepping into his shoes. We will reflect on the stages of our own faith journeys as well as who and what has shaped us along the way. And as we wander, let us tune our hearts to sing God's grace. May we rest in streams of mercy, never ceasing. Amen. I invite you to stand with me as we sing our song of response. This will be our response weekly through the season of Lent. Today we will sing verse 1 of Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, which is on page 400 in your red hymnal. Will you please stand and sing with me? We will sing verse 1. standing and join with me in our affirmation of faith. You'll see the responses in bold in your bulletin or on your screen if you're worshiping at home. I believe in a God of abundance, a God who sees possibilities where I cannot and who holds on to hope when I am at the end of my rope. I believe in a God who comforts a God who says, do not be afraid. A God who joins me in life's deep waters. I believe in a God who invites. A God who says, follow me and you will be fishers of people. I believe in a God who seeks after me relentlessly and persistently. A God of second chances and boundless mercy. A God who calls us by name. We believe. Help our unbelief. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. As we enter into our time of prayer today, um, I do have uh, some deep thanks to lift up to you. One is from Shirley Costo, who sent the church this beautiful hand-drawn card of Alaska wild roses. She is an incredible artist and draws her own uh, cards, and this one um, she created of roses. And she writes, With grateful hearts, we thank you all for your prayers and love during Gary's illness. He did feel God's love, and that gave him comfort. Thank you, Shirley Costo and family, 
for all of you who prayed for and cared for the Costo family during Gary's illness and death and who have been good friends to them since. Thank you so much from Shirley and, uh, and from me as well. Thank you for walking with them. The flowers on the altar today uh, are a gift from the family of Stephen Gibson. His memorial service was here on Friday. It was incredibly well attended from folks all over the community, and there was laughter and tears uh, and lots of stories sharing about Steve and his family. Was very grateful for the hospitality that you all provided. We had people here had helping with setup um, who were hospitality hosts, making sure the table stayed stocked and the coffee kept brewing and uh, folks who volunteered for cleanup and it took such a burden off the family to know that everything was being taken care of so thank you all who volunteered for that and in gratitude they donated these flowers for us to enjoy today as well in fact they um, gave them to us to use at Dottie's memorial yesterday uh, because they knew that we had another loss that we were mourning and uh, wanted to have a, a piece of beauty passed on to us thank you as well for all who volunteered at Dottie's service um, for the reception afterwards and for all of those who participated. It was a beautiful time of remembering and celebrating Dottie's life. So thank you all for being here for that. It was really a blessed event. There are so many among our number who mourn in so many different ways, and so we lift them up in prayer today. I invite you to pray with me. We're going to do a little uh, different style of prayers today. Um, these prayers are provided by the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America. Every week they update a site called For This We Pray, and they update it with the most current events that are happening around the country and the world so that congregations and worshiping communities can be praying not just for those among our number but our community, state, nation, and world. So will you please bow with me as we pray. Gracious God, for this we pray, for peace among nations where war and violence rage, especially Palestine and Israel, Myanmar, Russia and Ukraine, and the Sudan. For landslide victims in Turkey and families of those trapped, missing, or killed. For peaceful resolution to farmers' protest in India. For all victims of gun violence, including victims of the subway shooting in the Bronx, members of Lakewood Church in Houston, parade attendees in Kansas City, animal cruelty investigators in Washington, D.C., high school students in Atlanta, shoppers at a mall in Tampa, and those outside the downtown aquarium in Denver. For those places experiencing flooding and severe weather storms. For those who live with pain of body, mind, or spirit, visible and invisible. For the church, as we enter the season of Lent. For peace and comfort, as we confront our own mortality, praying especially for those facing terminal diagnoses, those nearing death, and those who are grieving. For the healing of all creation. God, this we pray. In the name of your Son, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. There are many different ways that we offer ourselves and our gifts to God through our prayers, 
our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. There is a new sign-up board here in the back of the sanctuary. You can see that this is all about loving God and loving our neighbors with opportunities to serve. And there are several clipboards back there that have volunteer opportunities coming up that I invite you um, to make sure that you walk by after the service and sign up for. Uh, for the month of March, there's a list for readers and greeters. And so if you would like to participate in worship leadership during that time, you may sign up there. There's another list for our Wednesday suppers. During this season of Lent, we will meet every Wednesday at 5 p.m. to share a simple supper together. And then at 6 p.m., we'll come here to the sanctuary uh, to observe Holden Evening Prayer, which is a beautiful uh, sung prayer liturgy that we all sing together. It's a shorter service. It's uh, about 30 to 45 minutes, um, and it's a really lovely contemplative way to have a midweek worship during Lent. Um, there is a sign-up back there uh, for both parts of that. If you are willing to provide a simple supper, um, I believe that we're still in need of one for this Wednesday and one a little bit later in the season. And so if you are willing to provide a pot of soup and some bread or something similar to that, please sign up there. And also, if you are interested in helping um, be a song leader during the Holden uh, prayer service, please put your name there as well, which will help Lucy get some volunteers to organize for that so that we can have many voices that help lead us through that service. Um, I want to remind you as well that on Saturday, February 24th, the United Women in Faith are meeting for a special talk with Judy Mulliken and Nell Gustafson about their pilgrimage in Spain, and all are invited to attend that and hear about their experience. Um, there are many more announcements in the newsletter and many more calendar items. If you don't receive our church newsletter and you would like to, please be sure you put your email address on the sign-in sheet out in the lobby. There's always lots more information about church and community events that come out in the newsletter. So if you don't receive it, um, you can sign, uh, put your email address on the sign-up sheet and we'll be sure to get that to you. Uh, if you would like to make a financial gift and you are worshiping online today, you can see our addresses at the bottom of the screen. Thank you so much for your generosity. And for those who are worshiping here in person, our ushers will come forward here in just a moment to receive this morning's offering. Um, as they do that, I invite the choir to come forward with your offering of music.
Will you stand for our doxology, our hymn of praise? It's in number 95 in the red hymnal, or the uh, words are in your bulletin. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Our going forth hymn today is number 127, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, number 127. And as you are turning to that, I also want to raise up another um, word of thanks for Savannah, who helped with the beautiful sanctuary decorations as we prepared our space for Lent. She is often tucked in the back booth where people don't see her, but uh, I am very grateful for her presence with both the tech and her artist eye that helps our sanctuary look so beautiful this season. Let's sing number 127, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Beloved wanderers, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious hearts on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within saying, take heart, do not be afraid. You are called, you are blessed. In your ups and your downs, you will always belong to God. Go now in peace, trusting that good news. Amen. Amen.